Hello, hello, and welcome back to Fallout 4. This is the second video of the Benevolent Bonnie Chronicles. Alright, so today we're at the uh, Starlight Drive-In, and there is a lot of scrap. Um, funny thing is, I didn't even open up the workshop yet, but Fallout 4, unfortunately, has a lot of bugs in it, and just by selecting either the center button <clears throat> on your PS4 controller or the select button on the Xbox controller, it opened up the workshop without even having the workshop unlocked for this, uh, settlement. Anyway, real quick, you see these yellow barrels that I've been getting rid of, and you see all that radiation that I've been getting is because those barrels are radiated as hell, and they're poisoning your character and your water, so you want to get rid of them as soon as possible. i got to take some rat away to get, you know, that uh, radiation out of my HP bar, and I'm going to take a stim pack to build my HP back up. I'm going to run through here and scrap everything a little bit quicker than I did at the Red Rocket because, well, I already showed you them how to do it for the most part. I did forget to mention, though, you can scrap trees. Um, you can also scrap some other random ma man-made items. They will highlight in yellow if you, you can scrap them, but you can't store them. Um, it's just something I forgot to mention in the Red Rocket video. So I guess you can say this is sort of like an extension to settlement building from the first uh, video but um the goal is the same i'm going to try to get this settlement up and running make it look nice and pretty ish i guess for at least an apocalyptic world and uh yeah i have to unlock this door to get to the workshop so now we officially have the workshop opened and i put a bunch of scrap in that toolbox by slithering through that open window and kind of like storing it so yeah, I uh, I just used the uh, game's own uh, physics against it for that one. But anyway, we got the workshop officially uh, open now, and I'm going to start putting some defense up. I am running very low on some of my gears. And there you go, I'm out of them. All right, so I'm going to have to get some more gears. Okay. So, um, well, I guess before I do that, I have enough of materials to build some... Some prefab uh, little makeshift houses, so I'm going to do that real quick. I'm also going to put the beds in there, uh, like I did with Red Rocket. Um, same concept. Uh, with a big open area like this, you can pretty much do the same type of build that uh, I did in the Red Rocket for something like this. Um, in smaller, more confined areas, you got to do it differently. So I'll show you how I would do something that's smaller, more confined, and different uh, a little bit later, maybe in part three or part four. Um, I'm also going to put these water purifier generators in and, uh, let me get uh, some more material and I'll be right back. All right. So we are back at the starlight driving and, uh, I'm going to try to put a couple more of those, those water, uh, pumps, uh, purifiers in. They do require a little bit of. A power to actually run unlike the actual normal like uh, manual pumps these you need to have a generator attached to them um, the, the small generators will generate about three units of electricity and those uh, water purifier pumps they only need I think two um, two units of electricity to work so I got six electricity now and then I add these it's four electricity used so i still have uh two electricity unused and ready and waiting um i'm just gonna put some of the manual pumps in as well because they seem to be a little bit safer they're smaller and they don't need it to have to be powered i mean they don't give you as much water they only give you three water while those um middle-sized water pumps give you about 10 units of water so it's kind of like a give or take, you know, you can either get more water or you can have uh, more secure water in the smaller amount of units uh, produced. Um, I'm just going to make these, the doors a little different to spice it up instead of using the same exact doors like I did in the Red Rocket. I mean, it does the same thing. They're just a different colored door, but still, they, uh, they work, they function just like the other doors. 
And I guess I'll start putting in some food. And I think I'm just going to start with mute fruit trees because each mute fruit tree gives you a whole one unit of food instead of a half a unit like everything else in the game. So to simplify it, I'm just going to throw mute fruit trees in. Um, and there you go. Six trees, six units of food. Simple enough. Um, and one settler can farm all six of those. No problem. Don't have to do any guessing work or anything. It's all right there in simple math instead of trying to add, which I'm not the greatest at apparently because I didn't add up right when I looked back in my other video. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up uh, an area for a store and instead of a tier two bar like I used in the Red Rocket now that we're level 20 and I was able to unlock the tier 3 um, bars using I think it was um, what was it the uh, cap collector um, second perk I think that's what it was something like that I'll have to double check that but anyway either way um, you have to be at least level 20 to get the tier 3 uh, shops and I'm there. What do you need? Cap collector and local leader. Yeah. Rank two. Yep. So now I have a tier three bar instead of a tier two bar. And that will provide extra happiness than a tier two bar will. I think what I'm going to do now that I'm at level 20, I think I'm actually level 21. I'm probably going to go back to the red rocket and I'm going to switch out the tier two uh, bar for a tier three. I'll do that a little bit later. Uh, right now I'm going to get some more material at the Drumlet Diner, which is right next to the uh, uh, Starlight Drive-In. Um, if you have high charisma, like my character does, um, you can actually avoid a battle between Trudy and the chem dealers outside, and you can actually have both of them as people you can buy stuff from. So if you see Trudy and you want to buy some junk, if you look at all the junk that she sells... Um, it tells you what type of material that you get out of each piece of junk. So, you know, there's like uh, aluminum, glass, springs, stuff like that. And uh, every piece of junk that's found, which is just mis miscellaneous objects basically that are in the game, they give you, they provide different materials. And uh, there is a perk where you can get more materials out of these things later on in the game, but I'm still doing like an early game. I think I, think I got about 13 hours into this game and yeah that that's a lot for most games that people are kind of used to playing that uh aren't open worlds but i mean for an open world it's just the beginning anyway uh, so we're going to fast travel back to the uh, starlight drive in and i'm going to continue building the stuff that i want to build All right, well, I only have four crystals, so I mean, that's enough for the recruitment beacon. And the recruitment beacon only takes um, one power. So I have six power units. I'm using five power units by adding that recruitment beacon to it. I still have uh, one power unit in, in store. Thing next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to raise my defense a little bit higher. I'm going to put, instead of just turrets, I'm also going to put some guard posts and um later on in the game i mean the turrets they're just you don't need the manpower to have defense using turrets when you have guard posts you need to have more settlers to actually be the guards which more settlers you have the more food you're going to have to produce which means you're going to have to have more settlers to produce the food which means you're going to also probably have to have more than one store to make everyone happy. So it just kind of piles on, on itself. I'm trying to keep this simple. So, I mean, I'll have the, the guard posts uh, for later because I am going to build this settlement up pretty large at some point. I might be level 50 or 60 by the time I do it, but I want to have at least maybe, maybe 10 people at this place eventually. 
Uh, right now, um, I'm just going to have two people. Uh, some people, they say that they can they have one settler and they can get a settlement to 100% happiness with one settler. The only way that I, I think they can do that is if they take an enormous amount of food and store it in the workshop because any food that you store in workshops... Um, if they don't uh, produce food at that settlement, they can actually take the food out of the workshop and feed themselves. So I'm guessing, I guess you have like a, uh, a pile of food, you throw it into the workshop, and then you have one settler that shows up and they're good on food for a couple of days, which gives, uh, I guess, the game enough time to bring the happiness of the settlement from 50 or whatever it is all the way up to 100. And then I guess that's another way you can get the benevolent leader achievement. I've tried that way. I have not been successful, but other people swear they have. Uh, if you want to give it a go, go for it. Just get a whole bunch of food, throw it in your workshop, throw one settler at the workshop, and have them open up a store and not farm food and see what happens. It might work for you. It didn't work for me, but... People swear that it does work. So if it does work for you, let me know. I'd really like to, I'd really like to know. And I'd appreciate it. Alright, so um I got I got four beds and my defense is looking alright. Um why is this settler already a guard? I don't need you as a guard. I need you on food duty, or I can put you at the bar. Either way. The settler is coming in. Um, you know what, why don't I put you on the bar, and then whoever the next settler is, they can do food duty, and, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do, so let me, let me, let me get back here, let me look at you, make sure you're getting over here. I'm going to, I guess go and get some more materials because I want to get some more defense here and I'll come back. So I'm back in the starlight drive in and we have a couple, um, we have a couple of uh, water purifying units. Um, we have the recruitment beacon, which we have two settlers now. So I'm going to turn that off and I think I'm going to store it this time instead of scrap it like I did in the red rocket. Uh, the reason why I turn it off and store it or scrap it is because even if you turn the switch off, um, there's, I guess, another bug or whatever in the game where there will be more settlers that still show up at your settlement. I don't mind that later on in the game when I have, like, everything that I want uh, upgraded, all the materials that I want to make, like, a really cool settlement or whatever. I don't mind that at all. Right now, though, I'm just trying to de get the uh, the basic of basic uh, stuff down um, in these settlements because I'm trying to make this a, a video for beginners. Anyone who's played this game for a while, they know some of this. And I'm just uh, doing what I can to, to help anyone that's still interested in playing this game. I know it's a popular one. I know there's some people that... Haven't even started playing Skyrim, which came out something like four years before this game game came out from Bethesda. And, yeah, people just, they, they pick up some games like this. They really like it. Um, it's one of those classic, I guess you can call it games, or it's soon, you know, it had the game of the year. And so it's a popular one, and people do eventually get to them. Hopefully uh, my rants will help you. Um, I kind of wanted to do... Uh, the sanctuary and get that cell settlement going but I I did remember that there was a, a glitch with Codsworth where I had to get Har um, um, Preston Garvey and all of his buddies to sanctuary at, at a good time because if I didn't uh, Codsworth would be glitched out for the, the rest of the game and I wouldn't be able to get him to leave uh, sanctuary uh, because robots, whatever, they they push down the happiness of settlements for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it's just something in the game. Um, Alright, so... I do have a guy who is, is farming now. He's a ghoul. 
apparently. I don't know if that has something to do with the happiness. Like, I don't know if humans versus ghouls, I don't know if there's, like, um, some sort of, like, bias, like, issues between the, the two types of humans, you know, whether you're radiated or not. I don't know if that's a thing. So I guess I'll just wait and see what happens. Uh, if uh, this settlement does get to 100% happiness, which I believe it's going to, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, and I'm going to probably expand this settlement because it's one of the better ones in the game eventually. So I want to get some more food ready and waiting for more settlers uh, later on down the line. I guess once I get their settlers here, I'll put some more defense and just kind of um, up the ante in the, the, the same type of blueprints that I'm making right now. Um, the scavenger station, I think this breaks down materials like quicker or it gives you materials like a new material every day or something like that. If someone's uh, job is to scavenge material, I forget exactly how that works, but it's good to have one at a settlement, especially if you're planning on having a bigger settlement. And, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to put that over there. Uh, this is a new, um, program that I'm using. So I don't know how the sound quality is. I don't know how the picture quality is going to be. I've never used, um, this program before to make a video. And that, that's another reason why I'm like, you know, maybe I should just kind of have like a filler video and check this new product out and see how it goes see how it sounds what i can do with it so that when i uh, get once again to the sanctuary build of that settlement and i don't know probably pull some of my hair out trying to figure that one out because once again i never got that to 100 percent happiness um if this is a program that i want to use to edit the video and continue using I, I'll be using this program there. Um, I'm going to see how this does. I'm going to see how it sounds, see how it looks, see what type of cool stuff I can do with it. And uh, I'll compare it to my, my other software. All right. There's going to be a lot of stuff behind in this door too. Um, I'm going to scrap a lot of this and uh, we'll go from there. Oh yeah, you can get attacked while you're in uh, settlement building mode. All right, so here I just put more defense and some more areas where you can store stuff in here. And uh, I think that's what we're going to stop this video at. All right, well, thanks for your time. I'll catch you later. Bye now.